Now we're turning to two important things. We're turning to music and we're turning to sports. What can you tell us about that field? What can we use to include students uh, in these two topics? Mm. Actually, sports is a wonderful way to facilitate inclusion. Everyone, for example, who has an accident and after this accident is in a, is in a wheelchair, but still has access to use his or her hands, uh, will tell you how sports have helped her or him to um, move back into just his, uh, his or her social life, like there's wheelchair tennis or wheelchair um, table tennis or a basketball from a wheelchair, which is, which is actually quite fun. I, I once made a training for sports for uh, persons using in a wheelchair. It's, it's quite amazing. Uh, it's just the normal sports. You totally forget the disability. And now we've moved to a stage that even persons who are very severely impaired in their motor abilities, they also they can participate in sports. Bowling is a wonderful possibility. Uh, they use a ramp that can be adjusted to, to the way they are seated in the wheelchair. Um, the balls have special grips. And actually one of my former pupils, she won the gold medal um, in the Special Olympics when it was in Abu Dhabi for her bowling. And she would not be able to do the typical bowling that's not adapted. Or for persons who use an electric wheelchair, uh, you can adapt. And now I do not know the English term. I would have had a picture there, but you can get the picture when you activate the link. What you use for the puck um, used in ice hockey. Yeah? But you play electro wheel electric wheelchair hockey and you just move the thing along either uh, on ice but typically here it's just a normal concrete floor and it's the most exciting hockey game or especially designed for people with visual impairments is the so-called gold ball um, it's like uh, soccer but you play it on the floor so everybody is sitting on the floor People who still have some remaining eyesight are bl getting blindfolded so that it's fair for everyone. And the ball has grips to it so it's easier to hold and you can, you can uh, roll it along. And it has a sounding bell inside so you hear where the ball is going uh, or when it's um, running off. And again, it's the goal is to bring the ball into the goal and for the goal holder not to let it in. And it's, it's just exciting and fun to watch and to play. Music, such an important subject in school and um, such a relief for any one of us. Yeah? And why should people with impairments not being able to perform music themselves and, and per music themselves and being reduced to just listening? And there's one firm, it's called My Breath, My Music and they produce the so-called magic flute and it's again attached to a computer and by moving your head upper or lower you play the different tones on the flute um, or the so-called v harp it's a harp that can be played without uh, having to know the musical notes um, underneath the strings of the harp is a, a sort of paper sheet and it shows you the musical notes but in different colors and where you have to activate the string um, it's where you see the, the musical note on the sheet below the harp and this is a, a nice example and they when you activate this link the very last one on the screen you also will find a video um, it's called Bliss iBand because of all of these persons are using the Bliss Symbol communication system and within this pr presentation we do not have time to dig into this, but they are producing music in the most incredible ways. Yeah? Even persons who have almost no controlled motor movements themselves. 
Thank you, Gonda, so much for giving us an idea about specific tools, low-tech, high-tech, uh, to include students into our teaching. And now we are at the end of our presentation. You have written some questions that every teacher should ask him or herself when um, trying to use assistive technologies. Please just give us an overview about what do I need to think about mm. before implementing assistive technologies uh, in my classroom or use it with my students? Yes, Edwina, that's an important uh, reflection. So whenever in my class there's a student um, who needs more than the typical gadget I'm using in class anyway, we have to think how independent is my pupil in retrieving and processing the information I'm providing in my class? Can he or she act independently? Does he or she require aids to gain greater independence in manipulating her or his environment? Can my pupil communicate without a communication aid? Does she or he require a form of augmentative and alternative communication to exp express her or himself? or to understand information. Yeah? There are some children who are perfectly able to speak, but for understanding information, they are doing better with some type of written or information in pictures. And I mean, especially thinking of children, for example, with autism, spe autism spectrum disorder. Many of these children are perfectly able to talk, but when it comes to process information, they do much better when there's actually something there, because typically the visual processing is better than the auditory processing. And now if we found some type of assistive technology, and again, it does not always have to be high tech, we have to consider how familiar am I with this type of AT? How familiar are my colleagues? Is the child dependent that only me being around in this class or can all colleagues handle this communication aid, for example, or this writing aid? How familiar are the pupils' peers? And are the fam is the family, are the caregivers familiar? Um, do they accept this type of assistive technology? Um, can the child use his assistive technology also at home in leisure time? Um, how flexible am I in using this assistive technology in class? How easy it is to use? There's this saying, get it to work in 20 seconds or it will not be used. And I have to say there's something true about this. Yeah? If it's too complicated, everyone is too resistant. Oh, let's not do this. We are much quicker without this device. Perfect. Thank you so much for giving us insight into this uh, topic, for giving us also something to reflect upon after listening uh, to this video. And I'm also thanking the viewers. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you very much also from my side. It was a pleasure.